doesn't matter whether you make something for the kitchen or for industry, something large or something small, something that will never be seen again or something that you hope everyone sees. The skill of the fabricator is crucial. Look at this kitchen sink. It seems to have been made from one piece of steel. But look underneath. It's actually been made from three pieces. Each separate bowl was resistance welded to the top and the welds have been blended in so well that you can't see the joints. This one looks the same, but it isn't. A stretch forming austenitic steel was specified so that the bowls and draining board could be made from a single sheet of stainless steel. Choose the correct type of stainless steel, use the right fabrication technique, and you can often do more with stainless steel than you can with carbon steel. Of course, there are some differences. Different press loads, different welding parameters, different filler wires, different cutting speeds. But the biggest difference is avoiding contamination by doing things right. Look at this. This is how it looked when it was delivered. So what went wrong? The answer is that someone was cutting carbon steel nearby and accidentally sprayed sparks onto the surface. These sparks were small particles of carbon steel, which then went rusty. Ideally, stainless steel fabrication should be done in a dedicated workspace. If this is not possible, then the production route should be carefully examined and all potential sources of contamination removed. For instance, wood, hardboard, polythene, even old carpets can be used to prevent stainless steel rubbing on carbon steel machinery and equipment such as this storage rack. Storing on the floor is never a good idea. Neither is using a pile of sheets as a temporary workbench. Grab hooks, chains or wire slings must not be used to move stainless steel because the carbon steel that is picked up will go rusty later. This can easily be avoided by using fabric slings or suction pads. Carbon steel wire brushes must not be used. Only use a stainless steel wire brush. But don't also use it on carbon steel or cross-contamination will occur. Similarly, the same grinding discs and wheels must not be used for both stainless steel and carbon steels. Make sure that nothing will contaminate the stainless steel surface. Of course, contamination can be removed with pickling paste, but this means extra cost. The surface appearance of these regions could also be altered, introducing even more costs for repolishing. Eliminating bad working practices can save a great deal of money. It's even better to mark out on plastic film to protect the stainless steel surface.